Sometimes it pays to take a job in a place that doesn't know what it's doing, the back of Beyond place, and that's what I'm about to do. Uh, but although I didn't know it at the time, in 1974, when I applied for a job in a, uh, uh, a back of Beyond uh, teacher training college in South West London. Uh, the college wasn't far from where uh, Putney Vale uh, Cemetery is um, situated, and that's where Howard Carter is interred, the, uh, the uh, discoverer of Tutankhamun's tomb. And in fact, when I went to the interview at this college, I thought of Tutankhamun's tomb because it's a bit like one itself. It's as though it hadn't been disturbed for 3,000 years. Now, King Tut, King Tut, King Tut, King Tut, King Tut. Now, when he was a young man, he never thought he'd see people standing in line to see the boy King Tut, King Tut. King Tut. How'd you get so funky? Did you know the monkey? Born in Arizona, moved to Babylon. A King Tut. King Tut. Now if I'd known they'd line up just to see you, and I'd paid in all my money and I'd buy a museo. King Tut. King Tut. Buried with a donkey, he's my favourite honky. Born in Arizona, moved to Babylonia, King Tut. King Tut. Well, I found my King Tut, as I said, in West London. Here we go. Um, I applied for a job as a temporary lecturer in light and sound in the Department of Art in this college. And uh, it was clear when I got there, they didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. Um, well, this is just an introductory interview, Vaughan. I'm Sybil Bonham, Head of Department. This is Arthur Cox, who runs Sculpture, and this is Ron Grint, who is um, a, uh, runs painting. I'm a senior lecturer. So am I, adds Arthur Cox, an older man with darting eyes and a sly sideways smile. Ron stares at him briefly. Just a flash of loathing. Quickly masked by an exaggerated grin. Arthur impassive. I see. Round one to Arthur Cox. Light and sound, a departmental weapon, most likely. Who is who said fights in academe are so vicious because the stakes are so low? Sybil leans across. I see you're a member of the Hampstead Labour Party. Oh yes, I joined a couple of years ago. Uh, what with the election and, uh, and wanting to, and you know, now it's 1974 and just seemed to fit in. Yes, of course. Shall we go to the coffee for coffee in the senior common room? I meet the other candidates in the senior common room. There's about three or four of them. Sybil is bright, while Rosencrantz and Guildenstern here are just a couple of bozos. I won't trust either of them. Arthur wanders over. Careful, Vaughan. Vaughan, what do you uh, think of this new wonderful? Light and sound. It's just a technique, as Sybil said, don't you think? Uh, well, it's interesting, uh, vital, but only if it's based extend sculpture, you know, traditional sense of three dimensional aesthetic, blah 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 blah. What is Arthur asking you? Have you seen our sculpture studio, Vaughan? Ron has seen Arthur cornering me and he decided to wander over. No, not yet. Ron slurps his coffee. Arthur impassive again. I'm surprised you'll be able to get through the door, Vaughan. The thing is, Vaughan, Arthur doesn't like light and sound. Do you, Arthur? Depends on what you mean by it, Ron. Do you know what it means? Why don't you come down to sculpture with me, Vaughan? Just you. The other candidates have already seen it, but you haven't. Off we wander. Sculpture is in a claustrophobic underground room. Stuff is piled everywhere. It is difficult to move. We could be in King Tut's tomb without the quality artefacts. This is all Ron's idea. Usual flim flam, light and sound. To get at me. If you come here, be careful of him. Terrible lecture. No, I shouldn't say that. Naughty Arthur. 
But light and sound, Vaughan, well, it will take place here, in the sculpture studio. That's the understanding. Sybil backs that. Anyway, I've said too much. Feel free to look around. Toodaloo. He is gone. What an unpleasant man. This place looks appalling. Kind of think of what the sculpture studios look like at Hamilton College, Cambridge, Reading University, and the Slade and Royal College, and all the rest of them. I'm sorry. Sound of steps outside. Hi, Vaughan. Arthur hiding in here somewhere? Oh, hello, Ron. No, he left about five minutes ago. Isn't this appalling? Whoever is appointed will have to bring this into the 20th century. It's only a one-year appointment, Christ. Actually, they won't. They should just ignore it. Set up a brand new light and sound studio working with painting with me. This will just wither away. No student will want to work here in this shithole. Hmm. Well, may I see the light and sound studio, Ron? Uh, well, now it's, uh, it'll be part of painting. The first appointed will decide uh, what they want. Do you want to hear something to make you laugh? Even in here? <laughs> OK. Well, the present principal, Lawrence Card, we call him Larry who will never marry. You'll see why. He's only been here a couple of years. Before him, we had a lady principal, a spinster. She was here for a minute with a women's teacher training college. Anyway, I had just started and I was at this academic board meeting and the principal said that as there were plenty of empty spaces around the college and she wanted to see more sculptures by a student displayed, could Arthur Cox arrange it? Well, of course Arthur said he could, nodded like a toy dog he did, couldn't believe his luck. Somebody noticed him. Then the principal said, and he says this in some kind of upper class woman's accent, it's obviously a party piece for him. Thank you, Vaughan. Thank you, Arthur. It is good to know Cox will now fill anything. A few in the academic board laughed. A few men. There were a few men teaching in there then. Huh, amusing. But don't you see, Vaughan, don't you see? It was a woman's college. Well, it didn't have to be a woman's college to make a joke. Not nowadays, anyway, not that one. Oh, I get it. The present principal. You'll be seeing him soon. Ha, ha, ha. And he punches me on the arm. You're a wicked Ron Vaughan. Great. And now the formal interview. An oak panel study with Sybil Bonham and the principal. He's in a black leather jacket with a zip. Lots of talk about my time at Cambridge. In the world of teacher training, Homerton is the bee's knees. Not a dicky bird about light and sound, of course. I'm now peeing in the gentleman's toilet staff only. Relief needed before the successful candidate is summoned. I look around. These gents are more expensive than Homerton. But then I suppose it's because it's now a mixed college with more male pricks to hang out. Right. But then who comes in that he will never marry? Larry strides to the urinal right next to the door to me. He stares ahead at the tiles. Vaughan, I just want to say we would like to offer you the job, but uh, I'll do this formally, of course, when you join the other candidates and I call you in. Assume you will accept. I'm caught. Why would I want to be in this dump? People don't know what they're doing. Chaos in fighting. Uh, but it's in London. Uh, uh, yes. Excellent. See you in a few minutes. Dancing by the Nile, the ladies love his style. Rocking for a mile, he ate a crocodile. King Tut. King Tut. Now when I die, don't think I'm a nut. Don't want no fancy funeral, just one like old King Tut. King Tut. King Tut. He could have won a Grammy, 
married in his jammies, born in Arizona, moved to Babylonia, King Tut. Well, I took the job and uh, I stayed in that place ten years. Not like that though, because the light and sound never materialised. Uh, the first year I was there, they, the Rosencrantz and Childerstone tried to get rid of me, or tried to side up with me to go outside on the other one. Uh, but eventually they went, and what I did there, I saw the opportunity, and I uh, took the uh, idea of the Goldsmiths course, where art students come from all over the world, all over the country, and applied to do a one-year teacher training course, postgraduate, uh, in which we provide studio space for their own work and so on, and you get some very good, it's wonderful, it's the best course I ever taught and I ran that for five years in this place because there's nothing to sort of stop me doing it anyway. Nobody had any other ideas and uh, uh, although Ron tried to run it for the first two years, hopeless, but um, it was a happy time and it's one of those things where you take a job and you think, oh, God, what have I done here? What have you done, Vaughan? But sometimes if you take a, play, uh, take a job in a place that's got nothing to say for itself, you can say it for it.